Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is uh, kind of a cool video for me. Sephora reached out to me and asked me if I would like to partner with them to show you guys some of my current favorite products. How awesome is that? Uh, since I've still been working on wrapping up my 2017 year-end favorites and fails, I haven't had a chance to talk about some of the newer products into 2018 that I have been loving. In three years on my channel, I've never partnered with a brand because I've never been comfortable with the terms. It's typically brand X wants to pay you to say you like their product X. Uh, this for me was a no-brainer because I already shop at Sephora a ton. I love Sephora and it was any brand that they sell, any products I wanted. The only condition Sephora had was they weren't gonna send me any products. It had to be products that I was already using and loving, um, which is in keeping with the standards I hold my channel to. So thank you to Sephora for allowing me to do that. I'm gonna demo these products and explain why I like them just like I usually do because the products are kind of all over. I have a hair care item. Um, a couple skincare and then some brow products. First up is a brand new product to Sephora, although it has been in the um, professional only market for quite some time. This is Olaplex number three. I like to shower at night, so the demo I'm gonna show you was applied yesterday at the end of the day um, when I came home from work and I just kind of let, put it in my hair, let it set, rinsed it out, and then I will come back on camera um, to show you the sheen in my hair. And even right now, I have no styling products or anything in my hair. I just blow dried it. I know so many of you guys know Olaplex is such a great product, but I think a lot of you guys um, are maybe not familiar with how it works. So since I used to do a lot of training for salons and stylists, I thought that I would explain it to you. What makes Olaplex unique is it is a bond rebuilder. This isn't something like a lot of treatments that you see are like hair masks or chock full of protein or silicones or oils. This has a patented ingredient that instead of just coating the cuticle of the hair to give it a smoother appearance that only lasts until your next wash, this is actually going in and repairing the structure of your hair. So Olaplex is available in three steps. Step one, which is a color additive that is salon only, which that ingredient is in here. It is mixed with some other things in here. So if you try to do like at home box dye, don't try to squeeze this in and think you're gonna get the same results, you won't. This is going to be a treatment after. Olaplex step one has always been the same. Um, their step two used to contain two different kinds of protein, I believe, uh, whey and soy. They, in the past few years, they have gotten rid of the protein because some people's hair are protein sensitive and too much of it can make your hair uh, really hard and brittle, which over um, combing and brushing can lead it to break off. So they have now completely got rid of all protein so it is impossible to overuse step one, two, or three. Step three is the client take home and what is available for retail. This contains the same bond rebuilder that step one contains. I'm gonna show you a diagram of what makes up your hair just so I can better explain it, hopefully give you a visualization of um, how this works. So your hair is held together by bonds, uh, three types of bonds to be exact. It's made up of hydrogen bonds. Um, these bonds break when the hair comes in contact with water and they reform as the hair dries uh, naturally or it's blow dried. It's why wet hair can't hold a style, whereas you dry and even curl, your hair is more likely to hold the style. It's also why a lot of styling products um, contain anti-humidity agents because when it's humid out, uh, a lot of times our hair can get frizzy and kind of break the style. So they're trying to repel that moisture out of your hair uh, so it doesn't break the hydrogen bonds. The next bonds in your hair are saline bonds. These bonds are salt-based bonds. They're responsible for the natural movement that you get in your hair. It's why when you're close to the ocean, um, kind of like that sea salt spray or other styling products that you can give that give you like those beachy waves and that movement in your hair, it reinforces the bonds that naturally exist. That's also why you can find a lot of minerals in styling products meant for curly and wavy hair. Last but certainly not least is the disulfide bonds, which is what basically holds the hair together. These bonds have a sulfur base in their structure. And if you ever smelt perms or straighteners, they smell like sulfur. The sediment is needed to break those bonds to reform them in a different shape. 
um, however it is, if you're straightening it or perming it, uh, whatever it is. But each time you color your hair, lighten your hair, perm your hair, straighten your hair, you use heating tools, you're out in the sun, you're in the pool, they all have the same effect on the hair, which is swelling it. When the hair swells, the disulfide bonds break. So Olaplex not only multiplies the bonds, it actually cross-links broken bonds, which is pretty amazing. The only thing prior to this product that could do that was time. You had to give your hair some more time to kind of link back up and kind of uh, give it a rest. So what's cool about this product is it will restructure your hair, it'll enhance hair movement, it helps uh, color longevity, it's just some serious TLC for your hair. As you guys know, I recently um, darkened my hair a little bit. I did go on with a semi-permanent, um, which is already kind of fading from my blonde out in this area, which is not uncommon typically when you're like that bleach blonde, my hair at one point was silver. You have to go in and fill your hair and then color over it, but since I'm so wishy-washy with what I like my hair to be, I typically go in with extensions to really change my color and then um, something that is easier to fade if I want to go back light again. Since my Bellamy Pro hair extensions have been color treated because even though the extensions aren't my natural hair, it was natural hair that has been color treated to get it to these colors. Typically extension hair starts off at a um, on the deeper end of the color spectrum so when you lighten it it's obviously going through some damage just like I do to my normal hair. <laughs> So I'm gonna split the screen right here and uh, talk while you guys can see me apply it so I'm not boring the life out of you. Basically, um, on the back of this bottle, it says, use before shampooing. This is not a conditioner, it's a bond builder. I believe it says that because some people are thinking this was a conditioner and then they weren't understanding why their hair didn't necessarily feel like completely silky smooth afterwards. So what I did in this is I actually use typically a lot of styling products or oils or things throughout my hair, leave-in, detanglers and things. So I always like to do a clarifying shampoo um, because this is best applied to towel dried hair for multiple reasons. One, it helps open up the cuticle of your hair. Uh, it's more likely to accept whatever you're putting on top when it's damp. And when your hair is dry, it's going to take a lot more product to spread through that opposed to when it's damp. So how I use this is I get in the shower and I do a clarifying shampoo on it just to get out kind of all the buildup that I might have left behind because I want this to like really just make contact with my hair. Then I towel dry my hair. I prefer to use either like a t-shirt or a t-shirt towel or um, the one that you're going to see that I have on my head right now is the Diva Curl towel. That is a microfiber towel and basically the benefits of using those instead of like a terry cloth towel is it doesn't rough up the cuticle of your hair. So if you have curly hair, I have natural wave to my hair. It helps it not be frizzy. And even if you don't have curly hair, it just helps your hair lie flat and not disrupt the cuticle. So in this demo, you're going to watch me part my hair. So what I do is I part it right down the middle into two pieces. Then I part it from um, basically like ear to ear. So I end up with four sections. I work in the back sections first so I can see after I have these parts down. I basically make sure that I'm getting it from the roots of my hair all the way down to the tips. I'll even kind of do this to work it in and I comb it through to make sure Sure that I have saturated every piece. Um, I use about a half dollar size amount on my hand at a time and you can always tell how much product your hair needs um, kind of like when you do one of these. Whatever is in this circle is kind of like what you should use on your hair, uh, the thickness of it. I actually first thought because I've only ever used the Olaplex in the, the professional sizes so when I first saw this I was like is that small? Is that going to be like one use on my extensions and my hair because it's so long? And you'll see I did my whole head and it's only right here. Um, so a little goes a long way with this. Again, apply it to towel dried hair. You're going to get your most bang for your buck that way. The instructions say to leave it on for a minimum of 10 minutes longer if desired. I like to leave mine on for 30 minutes as you'll see and at the end of that time I go in and I shower, I shampoo, and then I condition as usual. Here I'll insert a clip of you can see um, um, before Keegan and I went out last night, you can see the sheen that it gave my hair. And even right now, um, again, I don't have any styling products in my hair. I, I just blow dried it. If I do want my hair to have a little more volume the next day after I do one of these treatments, I like to go on with some dry shampoo. 
I love the um, Amica one. It's my favorite. So I can see myself getting like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably eight treatments out of this bottle, which is great. It's $28 and literally this will do a miracle on I think most people's hair. I can't think of anybody that doesn't apply heat or some kind of damaging styling or coloring. Unless your hair is like 100% virgin, you don't use heat or anything on there. You're never in the sun with any without any like sun protection or in the water or anything like that I think everybody can benefit from this the cool thing about this product too is it is vegan and cruelty free so it says to use this one time a week um, if your hair is really damaged to use it two to three times per week I really really do like this product and I will always be repurchasing this just because for the sheer amount of times that I've colored my hair I could use a little extra TLC Okay, next product up for me is, you guys heard me mention this in my skincare favorites and fails for 2017, but this was still a fairly new product to me and I've gotten a lot of questions about it, so I just wanted to touch a little bit more in depth on the ingredients and why I like this. Just for reference, I am 36 years old and my skin type is dry, although with my skincare routines, um, my skin is pretty normal. So first, how I use this is I've been using this after I cleanse because this is a liquid chemical exfoliator. You hear this? This is a blend of AHA, which is lactic acid in this one, and their BHA is the salicylic acid, which is the only BHA. Anyway, after I cleanse my skin, I don't want to have anything else down on this. If you think about this as like something that's helping break up what holds together like kind of like dead skin cells on your face it kind of breaks those bonds up and helps slough them off so you wouldn't want to put down like expensive serums and things like this and then put that on top also because of the pH of this you want to put this on first let it dry down before you follow up with other products because if you mess with the pH of some other skincare products that you're using it might not it might kind of like cancel out those benefits so I use this after I cleanse. I use them on my Shiseido Facial Cottons that you guys know I love, and I do cut these in half so I get double D use out of them. Otherwise, I find that they're way too big. I'm gonna split the screen here so you can see how I applied that uh, yesterday morning. The reason I love this is because it contains lactic acid, which is my favorite AHA because it is a natural humectant. It's gonna attract the moisture from the air into my skin, and it is one of the most gentle AHAs. So it's not as aggressive as glycolic because glycolic is a smaller molecule, it penetrates your skin deeper. Um, that is kind of the gold standard of AHAs because it the, the results are so dramatic. But for me, my skin doesn't really play well with glycolic acid. I find lactic is just the best for me. Best for people with dry skin, um, normal skin, and I've even had some friends that have oily skin that love it. So this is a 10% acid complex, and it does contain, again, salicylic acid, which is going to help kind of clear out those pore linings. So if you have blackheads, um, blemishes, things like that, it's going to help. So the pH of this is right in the sweet spot for a chemical exfoliator to work. It needs to be between a three and a four. This comes in at a 3.3. What it's basically gonna do is help brighten your skin. It's gonna help smooth your skin, help kind of decongest those blackheads that you may have. Be warned though, this does smell like vinegar. Uh, that's because of the acetic acid that's in here. Uh, that's also the primary acid that is in vinegar. It acts as a preservative instead of containing a drying alcohol. Um, it has that, that vinegar smell to it, which I'm completely fine with because the results I get from this are nothing short of amazing. Uh, it's definitely worth it for what it does to your skin. And believe it or not, you'll come around and kind of get used to it. My boyfriend and I do those shots of like um, the mother's apple cider vinegar when we're getting sick or something. Um, we do have to dilute it so you don't like burn your throat or your teeth or anything like that. The ingredients in here are all great, which made me eat my words for, I always, from that school of thought that skincare should be left to skincare companies and makeup should be left to makeup companies. So I was not expecting a lot from this product before I tried it, and this is really a home run. It contains some great ingredients like uh, sulfur, niacinamide, glycerin, which are gonna help uh, clarify, smooth, and hydrate your skin. 
I've been using this every single day. You can use this morning and night, again, because it is a lactic acid. Um, I can use it twice a day, but it's important for you to listen to your skin because my skin is used to pretty aggressive acids. Not everyone will be able to. Um, they're not lying when they call this the tingle treatment because there is a strong tingle. Um, if your skin is super balanced and used to acids, you might not feel it and it might go away in a few days. Um, I actually still feel the tingle, which I live for that tingle. <laughs> I really like it. So uh, that's not a problem again for me, but everyone will be different. So start slow, try it once a day, see how your skin reacts if you wanna bump it up to twice a day. Again, depending on what your skin is like. If you have extremely sensitive skin, I would recommend getting a sample from the store first and test patching it right along your jaw just to see how your skin reacts. I've been using this every single day in place of some of my much more expensive acids and I've been loving the results. $39 for this big bottle of it, which will last you a very long time. Next up is the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide Cream. That's fun to say, polypeptide. So this Drunk Elephant did send me um, not too long after it launched and I've been testing it out for a while. I actually ended up loving it so much that I went out and bought one myself so that way I could have one in my vanity for my morning skincare and one in my bathroom when I'm doing my nighttime skincare just so that I didn't have to remember to bring them back and forth between the room because I'm lazy. <laughs> What's cool about this is this is a protein moisturizer. First, I want to show you the packaging. One thing I always love about Drunk Elephant is their attention to detail and packaging. It's very thoughtful to show um, so the product you're getting the most bang for your buck when you purchase something. You guys know I love my Belief True Cream Moisturizing Balm. Now, this is in jar packaging, but um, because of the price, and this is just a moisturizer, and it's the best moisturizer on planet Earth, but I don't mind this being in a jar packaging. Something like this could break down when exposed to air. So I do like it that the way that this works is you push this down and the product comes up. That way you're not wasting any of it. Um, I think that that's really awesome. I'm gonna put this on my hands right now because in my chest because I have a full face of makeup on. The ingredient deck on here is uh, pretty awesome. It contains nine different peptides, which are skin rebuilding. It's gonna help with firmness, fine lines, wrinkles. It's basically a strengthening moisturizer, you could think. Um, in an interview, I saw that Tiffany said she was thinking that she always puts protein powder in her smoothies. So she was thinking she would like to create something that was kind of like a protein shot for your face. The amino acids in here, um, I've been obsessed with amino acids even in my hair care products. They're basically going to help uh, hydrate and replenish and fortify your skin. Basically, it's making it stronger, you could think of. Um, they're using coconut esters instead of silicones in here. I'm not opposed to silicones, but some people's skin do have a sensitivity to them, so it's nice that this shouldn't have anything in here that's um, irritating people. I'm gonna, again, show a split screen of me applying this. This is perfect for me in the morning because I don't like a really heavy moisturizer because I find as I apply my makeup throughout the day, my makeup kind of slides around and then I end up looking like a grease ball. Shortly, I will have an updated AM and PM skincare routine, but in the morning, I cleanse, I acid tone, I use a hyaluronic acid acid serum, a vitamin C, proteiny, um, and then I use an oil and my sunscreen. Then I apply my makeup. At night, I've actually changed a lot in my skincare routine um, pretty recently. So um, just to give you a little rundown, I use a balm to remove my makeup as my first cleanse. I do a second cleanse with my Clarisonic and a cleanser. Then I'll use the Tarte Knockout, again, an acid tone on my skin. I'll use a spritz, a hyaluronic acid, proteiny, and then my favorite face cocktail that I always talk about, my Belief True Cream Moisturizing Balm and my fresh sea berry oil mixed together. Again, I put a dollop of this on the back of my hand, three little drops of this. I just finished this one last night, and um, do you guys know they make like a big mama size of this? This is huge. I have these on backup all the time because I have this fear. I'm like, please don't stop making it. I feel like sometimes when I fall in love with products, all of a sudden they're like, oh, we're not gonna make them anymore. So I'm like, please never stop making this. This has made such a big difference in the hydration level of my skin. Um, and I do love this, but it is too rich for me to use in the morning. Um, when I go to bed at night from mixing these two, I kind of look like 
a shiny, I don't know, a shiny grease ball, but I don't care because when I go to bed, when I wake up in the morning, my skin has completely drank it all in and my skin is very soft and very luminous. So if you're gonna use this and you have dry skin, I don't think that this will be enough for you at night. I've been kind of using this as my anti-aging step because of all of the, the polypeptides in here. Um, yeah, I haven't really been using a dedicated anti-aging serum since I've been using this. If you guys are familiar with their uh, Lala Retro Whip, that one is a lot heavier of a feeling um, because that is a whipped oil and it kind of leaves behind that oil remnants, which you guys know I like. I love oils but this is much more like a gel texture like a whipped gel cream it's very fast absorbing it doesn't sit on top of the skin for very long I really love this of course I do because I went out and bought it, a second one so I can have one in each room now I want to go on to my eyebrows. You guys have been giving me some compliments on my eyebrows lately. Uh, thank you so much. I think it's a mixture of one, I'm filling them in thicker, which because I have some prominent features on my face and uh, some more sharp angles on my face, I think fuller brows fit me a lot better. I was kind of like running through a million different brow products trying to figure out what color I wanted, what was going to work for me. Um, so I finally have found what I think is my perfect routine for my brows to last all day and do exactly what I want. So I'm going to show that to you guys now. Okay guys, so I have my skincare all done and I am wearing a cushion foundation on. Um, I haven't contoured or done anything like that yet. I wanted to come on here and show you how I've been loving doing my eyebrows lately. I think what it is is a mixture of finding the proper color that works for me and my eyebrows and also I've been filling them in uh, fuller which gives a more youthful appearance and I've been cheating using these ABH stencils which I'll touch on in a minute. I also have this on my lips. This is one of the new sugar lip treatments. This is in Dream, which is this nice light pink color. Um, I still have my Invisalign on the bottom. It's not on my top anymore for now. I just don't like um, lipsticks and stuff to be able to stain the trays, so I stick to lip balms or tinted lip balms, and this is kind of like a your lips but better. It just gives it a nice light pink tint. So I have my window open in front of me right now with the sun coming up so you can get somewhat of a better idea of uh, true color. I do have permanent cosmetics on my eyebrows. Um, one time about three years ago I did the powder film method and then another time about a year, maybe a year and a half ago, I did the micro blading. Now I exfoliate every single day with um, AHAs if I use Retin-A products. I also use a lot of facial oils in my skincare, which one of the things most artists will tell you that perform microblading is that if you have extremely oily skin, they tend not to last as long because your body just kind of pushes it right out, which uh, that's pretty much the case for me. So on this side, you can see um, I have a little bit of the microblading right there still, and it peaks just a little there, but the tail and everything is pretty much gone. Right here I have a little bit up in the front here, a little right here, and then you can really tell right here where it's kind of like faded, but you can see where my eyebrow didn't arch up as high. So they were leveling them out like that so it didn't look like I have one droopier eye. Which I think everyone might have one different eye than the other, but. Mine was kind of looking like completely like that. I got my permanent cosmetics since you do need to redo them every so often. I went with an ashy color and a little bit lighter because I used to lighten my eyebrows slightly about once a month because when my hair was a double processed blonde, my natural eyebrow color is this. So it was looking um, just a really harsh contrast. What I like about it is I can always go in and fill them in darker if I want. And the next time I do it, I'll probably get them um, a bit darker now that my hair is darker. So I have two ways I've been doing them. This way I'm going to show you on this side how I've been doing them if I'm just trying to like run out the house or get them done quickly and then I'll show you the side that I use the stencil when I want them thicker. That's pretty much predominantly what I've been doing on camera anyway. I've tried so many different brow products over the years. I remember asking you guys on my Instagram what some of yours were because I was really having a hard time figuring out which products I really like. I wanted something that wasn't too waxy but wasn't too creamy that would smear all over my face and ones that suited my hair color. Um, I find very rarely does one size fit all, even one or two shades rarely fit all. So I enjoy the selection that ABH has, or Anastasia Beverly Hills has with their brow products. What I love about the Anastasia Beverly Hills products is the variety of shades. I love it that they go from really blonde, platinum hair, 
They have um, light brown, medium browns, dark browns, uh, auburn shades, caramel shades, even ebony shades. So I think pretty much everybody's covered. You ever heard that saying when they say eyebrows are supposed to be sisters, not twins? Um, mine aren't twins, they're not sisters. Hell, they don't even look like they're friends. Uh, you can see this one goes down a lot lower and if it wasn't for that permanent cosmetic so I would kind of always look like I had one mischievous brow lifting up which I guess I can be mischievous. These stencils have really come in and helped me make sure that I get the same size and shape on both sides. And actually at my last microblading appointment I brought this stencil in which you can see it's pretty spot on. It's not as long and it's not as thick. She made them a little smaller so they look natural when I'm not wearing makeup. But um, and, and they should modify them to fit your face, but you get five different styles in here that you can that you can use, and if you even like any of those, you can bring them into for like a guide of how big and maybe how arched you want them to be. I'm gonna show a chart here in the screen that I took from the Anastasia Beverly Hills website that can maybe help you in selecting your shade, because I was wearing the wrong one forever. I was using soft brown, and since my hair is darker, you could see the difference in between the soft brown and my eyebrow hair. So now what I do is I actually use a couple different products, one to cast a shadow and then one slightly darker to go on and uh, imitate brow hair. So first what I wanna do is brush my eyebrow hair up. So in this one, if you can see where that the tattoo is up higher where my eyebrow hair isn't, I wanna make sure that the hair kind of like goes up into that tattoo so it gives the appearance of hairs being up there instead of it just being some weird light color. Now this is something that I've grown to love. This is the ABH Brow Primer. It's basically just a wax pencil. Um, I like this because the directions do say to go over your eyebrows after, but I actually like to put a little wax in first because I feel like if I'm using powders, it gives it something to hold on to, which I like. And it also just makes those little front hairs stick up so I kind of know where I need to put product and where I don't. So on this side, I'm gonna show you what I do if I just wanna keep my existing shape that I have. I'm gonna take the ABH Brow Definer. This is a medium brown, and this is like pretty much the perfect shade for me. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to start lining right underneath my brow just to make it a nice crisp line. Anastasia talks about the golden rule that it should go up from here, then from the tip of your nose over your pupil, it should arch, and then the end of your eyebrow should come out from the edge of your nose out there. So if you can see, mine's a little short. If you need help in the beginning while you're doing that, you can always draw on like a light little dot. So I'll show you here just to make sure I go out enough. I'm gonna put that little dot there. There we go basically polished up that bottom line. The tips on these brow definers are a tiny little triangle and it helps to give more of like a soft and diffused look opposed to the brow whiz, which I really like if I'm getting in there and doing some detail work. I like both of those formulas. Now I'm going to take the ABH Brow Duo powders and I'm going to take that on their 7B brush. I'm gonna pick up this lighter shade of the two right there and I'm just going to feather that up into the front there where I don't have as many hairs. I don't wanna do the darker shade because I feel like they do look a little more natural when it's a little lighter up here and then get a little progressively darker. I don't really like that ombre eyebrow trend, but um, for this it works nice. Now I'm gonna go into the darker shade and I'm going to go over where that tattoo is on me. That's still a bit too light. So you can see that one is still not very thick. Um, it's the same shape as mine. Now what I do to finish off is I'm going to take some of the Dip Brow uh, Palmade. This is an ash brown, and this is the best brow brush I have ever used for palmades. It's not good for powders because it's a very firm nylon bristle, but this is the Lancome number 27, the Eyebrow Reshaper. I've only found this online. It says sometimes it's in stores, but when I've gone to the stores, I haven't seen it, so um, I just ordered it off line. So what I'm gonna do is, what I like about these two is this is waterproof and smudge proof, 
once it dries. So I know that if I accidentally like rub against my head that my eyebrow isn't gonna wipe off. And I just tap it into the cap because I only want a little on this brush. And since it is so firm, it kind of like drags across these little hair-like strokes. So I'm just gonna go in and just put a couple. I don't wanna do a solid line because that's when they start looking like uh, that Instagram brow trend. Which again, I, if you like that, that's awesome. Um, it just doesn't look right on me. So see, this one is a little thinner. I'll show you how I like to do them with the brow stencils and then I'm gonna go in and make this one a little fuller and then I'll do my brow set as well. So even when I use the stencil, I like to go through with the brow definer and I like to just trace out where this bottom line is. What that's going to do is make sure that I don't bring the stencil too far down. You kind of want it, in my opinion, kind of like a sweet spot where you're getting a little, you're adding some powder above and a little below if you have really sparse eyebrows. Because if you put it so all the powder's up top, you don't see any of your natural hair coming through. So I kind of like to make sure I'm situating it right in the middle. Um, in the beginning, when you're getting used to holding these on your face, it could be a little awkward, but I'm so used to it now, um, I don't mind. So I'm gonna take the brow powder again, and I'm gonna take the 7B brush, and I'm gonna take the darker of the two shades, pack that on my brush. And so they have the golden rule mark on here. So you want this to go right from the corner of your nostril, over your pupil, and the end of your brows. So now that I know where I don't want my brows to go any lower than, I mean, it can a little bit if it needs to fit the stencil, but once you get used to doing this, I don't think it'll be a problem for you. I try to keep it too, not so close to the front because I'm gonna go in with a lighter color in a little bit, but if you go too close into the front there, it's gonna really block off your eyebrows again and you'll be able to tell that you completely have them filled in, which I'm sure you guys can tell mine are filled in because they're so large anyway. Now I'm just going to touch up where my I smudged my foundation off. Um, it is easier to do them before your makeup is on, but for me, I typically go over really close with my foundation, so then I'll get foundation in my eyebrows. So just know um, while you're touching it, you might have to go back and touch up if that smudged your makeup at all. Now you can see I have the basic outline here. Now I'm just going to take a little bit more of that brow powder and the darker of the two shades, fill that in. You can see here that it still looks like my natural hair because I didn't go overboard. I'm gonna pick up the same pomade that I was using on that same brush. And for me, I'm gonna focus on this arch right here. Just making little brush strokes. Now I did have a couple little missing hairs up in this front area, so I'm just gonna kind of do that. Now if you can see this one on the tail is a lot thicker, it's, the shape is a lot more polished than this side, which is a little more angular right here. I give this pomade just a quick minute to dry uh, before I blend it in with the spoolie, which I'll show you. In the meantime, I'm going to go through and make this one match now. So now on this side, I'm gonna make sure that I go through with that brush and just blend everything together. And now on this side. Now that that part is all done, I always set my brows. These are two new brow products that I have absolutely been loving by Hourglass. They have these fibers right here that are like a brow thickening. Um, what I love the most about these products is the brush on here. It really makes sure it's long haired on one side and short on the other that you can really get in and coat every hair, which is cool. And this is what I use if I want a little more dimension in my eyebrows because I will use the warm brunette color. Um, any color that's not exactly my match just because it almost makes it look like I have highlights in my brows a little bit. Um, the one I've been using the most is the Art Shaping Gel, which is in clear. Now this is not gonna smudge, it's not gonna flake. I've had some brow gels before that kind of feel crusty and then it almost looks like um, white gel cast in my eyebrows, which this doesn't have. So I'm gonna start in the front here and I like to brush them kind of like straight up and make sure I'm hitting 
the spots. I feel like when you see these little hairs up on the top here that aren't perfectly groomed into the brow, it makes it look more realistic too, instead of just being like smooth on the top and on the bottom. Now I'm just gonna go finish the rest of my makeup off camera. So that pretty much wraps this up, guys. I wanted to thank you so much for your support. Um, I would love to hear what some of your favorite products from Sephora are currently. Um, it could be new or new to you. I always love hearing that because then I can find some new finds as well. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and I will see you next time.